Amphipathic molecules are compounds that have both polar and nonpolar regions. So essentially that means that we have both hydrophilic and hydrophobic regions because the nonpolar region will contribute to the hydrophobic character and the polar region will contribute towards the hydrophilic character. One of the most common examples of amphipathic molecules is a, uh, is a phospholipid. So a phospholipid consists of a phosphate head group and the fatty acid tail. The fatty acid tail is, is a hydrocarbon tail, so it is made up of carbons and hydrogens. We know that the carbon-hydrogen bond is nonpolar because if we take the electronegativity difference between these two, it will be less than 4. And since it is less than 4, that means this bond is nonpolar, therefore it is hydrophobic. Now this phosphate head group the phosphate head group consists of the phosphate atom with, uh, with oxygen bound to it. So since it has that oxygen bound to it, the phosphate and the oxygen have that high electronegativity difference. They are polar and they contribute to the hydrophilic character of, uh, of the phospholipid. So where do we see phospholipids? We see them in our cell membranes. So within all our cells uh, in humans, we see this cell membrane where on the outside we have the phosphate head and on the inside we have that, hydrocarb uh, that hydrocarbon chain, so that lipid part. So what is the purpose of this arrangement of having these hydrophilic compounds on the outside and these hydrophobic compounds on the inside? In a way, it's a protective barrier to prevent unnecessary molecules from entering through the membrane and into the intracellular space. So since the outside is hydrophilic, it will interact, it will interact with the aqueous environment outside of the uh, cell, but that hydrophilic outside portion will not allow any hydrophobic molecules. So any unnecessary hydrophobic molecules, they will not be able to pass through because of this hydrophilic barrier. Now on the inside, we see a hydrophobic barrier. So this hydrophobic barrier prevents any polar molecules from coming through. And I'm talking about large polar molecules. We know that small, uh, a small nonpolar molecules will, will be able to pass through. But the polar molecules will not be able to come through because of this barrier. So essentially, this arrangement prevents unnecessary molecules from passing through. That is why we have these specific carrier proteins that will allow certain molecules to pass through, whereas the rest will not be able to come in. So amphipathic molecules are also important when we talk about the formation of mesels in the hydrophobic effect. So essentially what happens is that if there is a amphipathic molecule in a polar solvent, the polar head groups will come to the outside and the hydrophobic uh, part of the molecule will go towards the interior. So in this way, amphipathic molecules are also able to form mesels in water to create a more stable environment with themselves because this a hydrophobic tail does not want to be interacting with that polar solvent. Only the hydrophilic head is happy and willing to interact with the aqueous solution outside. So once again, amphipathic molecules, quite straightforward. They are just molecules that have both polar and nonpolar regions. A very simple example is a phospholipid. We've got that polar region, we have a nonpolar polar region. Uh, they're important in regards to the hydrophobic effect and formation of mesels, and they are important in our cell membranes.